time, it was clearly understood that there was uh, economic liberty and personal liberty was one and the same. It's because we had a right to our life. You either believe in natural rights or you believe in God given rights. You have a right to your life. You have a right to your life, you have a right to your liberty. But you don't have a right to hurt anybody. You don't have a right to take property from anybody. And uh, under those circumstances, uh, you know, freedom, personal freedom, and, and uh, economic freedom are, are one and the same. You know, um, Bastiat wrote an interesting book a few years ago, like 150 years ago, called The Law. <laughs> but it is such a sound principle in the law. You know, and it's a small, small little book, but I have some French students that come to my office once a year, and there's a small libertarian group of uh, French students, and they come over, I say, there are a lot of you over there? And they say, no, but we're growing in numbers. But frequently I'll ask French people whether they know about Bastiat, and there are more Americans that know about, the, the freedom movement here understands Bastiat more than uh, most of the French people uh, understand. But Bastiat had a very simple principle. And uh, it, it says that uh, if you can't do it, I, the government, can't do it. So are you allowed to take from your neighbor because you want it or need it or desire it or demand it? No. I mean, fortunately, we're still at that point where we don't allow you to go into your neighbor's house. He has two cars and you don't have any. Well, I have a right to it. I need it. I want it. And I need a job. You know, you know no. So fortunately, uh, you're not allowed to do that. But. It's perfectly permissible to hire a lobbyist, send him up to Washington, and pay his way into this job that he gets, and you vote for the largesse, you vote for the IRS agent to go. March in the house with a gun and say, look, you will pay up and we'll take care of somebody else and we'll transfer this wealth. A simple premise is you can't get government to do what you're not allowed to do. That is the moral principle of the law. I would say that that very sound fundamental principle if we would follow that we would have much greater prosperity we would have much more peace in the world we would not be the policemen of the world and our economy would thrive and we wouldn't steal from people through the depreciation of our money through a fraudulent counterfeiting system that we have today that is where our prosperity would come though today is how we go from the transition. I'm convinced, like I said, that we're much further along than I ever dreamed. There are more people out there, more people joining us every day. The young people are receptive to this. The true revolutions occur with young people. Now those of you who don't think you're so young, you have to be young in spirit if you've been involved in anything that we do. <laughs> no, it is, it is, freedom is such a young idea. It's only been tested for a couple hundred years. Tyranny has been around for thousands of years. The tyrants have been there, and believe me, it's, it seems like uh, they're always available. Uh, no matter what society there is, they're available. And then uh, when the people become soft, and they forget about how prosperity came, and then the tyrant comes along and promises these good things, the tyrant you know, sucks them in, and then uh, your freedoms are gone. So today we have safety nets. We have safety nets. We give up our economic liberty because nobody could make it on their own. But governments produce nothing. So that's a, that's a fallacy. But now, since 9-11, a very, very serious event. That if we don't fully understand it, we'll have a lot more of them. But the great harm that has come from that is that so many have been willing to say, we have to sacrifice some of our freedoms to be safe. I do not believe that it is ever necessary to sacrifice one bit of personal liberty to be safe. safe in our homes because there's a policeman outside the door. I mean, where the most policemen are, where the most laws are, 
is where the worst crimes are. Because the laws, are that you put a lot of policemen in there, you have laws against uh, owning guns, and, and there's anti-drug laws, and the people can't even defend themselves. So where are you safest? Well, you'd think it would be really dangerous living out in the rural areas or in the country. Now, I think this is a rather rural area, and I know the rural area is a little bit better in Texas, but let me tell you, Nobody gets messed around with in a rural area. <laughs> and my guess is that in an area like this, and a lot, percentage-wise, geographically, probably most of North Carolina is protected by the Second Amendment. <laughs> Well, the airplane, the airline companies were supposed to own them, but uh, they have been subsidized and regulated to death for all these years. And I understand, other than Southwest, I don't think any airlines ever made any money. You know, it's always losing money, and, and they're losing a lot. And, uh, and, and yet, the responsibility for safety was given to the government. I mean, the FAA set up the standards, so we had to go through checkpoints because of the uh, hostages before. But the rules were no guns on the airplane, and, and uh, don't ever resist. And uh, lo and behold, I guess somebody figured that out. Uh, so they didn't need a gun, all they need were razor blades and nobody was gonna resist and, and uh, the responsibility wasn't with the airline company. But what happens in places where the owner has all the responsibility? I live in an area where there's a lot of chemical plants, but the responsibility is with the company. They have fences and they have the private police and they have a lot of guns, nobody messes with them. And uh, so it, it's much different with the responsibility. How about, how about delivering money in a armored car? You know, that looks like an easy target. I guess occasionally uh, they get robbed, but not very often. I mean, because they know that there's somebody there trained and has a gun. Uh, but we did the opposite. We, we had laws that protected money being hauled around in trucks that uh, did not put the pressure on the owner of the company to protect its cargo, its valuable uh, passengers. So what did we do uh, right after 9-11? We further institutionalized more control from the government. Had they ever come up with any decent way of monitoring us? I mean, every day it gets worse. And I don't feel a lot safer because all of a sudden I see somebody in front of me in a wheelchair and they're taking them into a room to search them. You know, it, uh, the whole thing is just, just out of control. And there's so much electronic uh, um, me mechanisms that are available today that uh, airlines could actually figure out a way to get us through those lines a lot faster <laughs> and perfectly safe. But nevertheless, what has happened, I think, is we've lost count of confidence. We, a lot of us have lost confidence and faith that freedom really works. And freedom does work. And freedom, fortunately for us, is still very popular. You know, talking about whether freedom is a new idea or an old idea, uh, it is a new idea. And it, the best experiment was here in this country. But I think in the last hundred years, we have gradually diminished our freedoms, and uh, they are being rapidly diminished uh, uh, right now. And of course, we're going uh, in, in the wrong direction. So it is up to us, really, to revive that spirit. And uh, that, that can be done. Uh, a lot of times, when I bring up the issue of money, as they, even today, I had an interview today, and uh, they immediately said, well, do you want to go back to the gold standard, you know, to belittle it? And I said, well, there were some imperfections in the old gold standard, but what we ought to be talking about is the imperfections, the illegality, the immorality, the unconstitutionality of paper money. Yeah. <laughs> power to create money out of thin air. There, once again, we bossed you out of proof. If you can't counterfeit money, why do we let the people in Washington counterfeit money? <laughs> and, uh, well, we can trust them. They're good folks out there. No, they <laughs> secret, I mean, congressmen that don't usually care about the issue, and also they will, uh, they will also uh, uh, do things in secret. 